I think today the ultimate thing I'm looking for is does this dish taste like Christmas? Where's the beef? Where's the beef? I just can't stop eating it. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> Holy cow. Is it bad if I give 10 out of 10 to each dish? Get excited, Santa's coming to town. We're trying each other's Christmas roast. Ho, ho, ho. We're gonna give them a score between one and 10. Chef with the high score wins the competition. Very excited, I love roast. I mean, who doesn't? I love to roast almost anything. I absolutely love Christmas. I start planning Christmas lunch in advance, like six weeks beforehand. So I'm from Ukraine and Belarus. We often use duck. We also use chicken and also goose but you can't really find that around here. Really, that was always made for celebrations. Hi, my name's Linda Dalrymple. I was on season 13 of MasterChef Australia. I love a good roast. The pièce de résistance to a family feast. When you see other people happy and enjoying what you've cooked, for me, that's just satisfaction. It's not about winning. It's about learning and trying and getting inspiration. Like, it's just such a special thing to do. Of course, it's not Christmas unless you go into a food coma. So today I am cooking a roasted duck with a smoky pancetta buckwheat filling, uh, duck fat vegetables, and a beautiful spiced sour cherry sauce. So to make the filling for the duck, we're going to start off by mixing a few ingredients in a large bowl. So we've got pre-cooked buckwheat here, some pan fried smoky pancetta, and we're also gonna be adding some walnuts. For the seasonings, all we're gonna add is some salt and pepper. So just stir that through and that's it, that's done. Now we're ready to stuff the duck. I've just washed it, I've patted it dry with some paper towel and I've let it out of the fridge just for one hour so it airs out a little bit. Just lift it up like this over the baking tray and we're gonna be stuffing it now. Push it all the way up to get as much stuffing in. And then I actually like to keep it pretty open because it creates this beautiful, crispy, crunchy crumb. So just to finish that up, I'm gonna put some of the walnuts on top. So now I'm gonna add all the vegetables to the tray. Today I'm using baby potatoes. They just absorb so much flavor. I'm also gonna be adding parsnip. It's such an Eastern European vegetable and I love to cut it sort of like in these thick style rings. That way cook just as long as the potatoes and provide a different texture. Also adding onion. I've used eschalots because I think they're the perfect size and they also just caramelize beautifully. They get a sweet surface and we're going to just cover everything with a lot of duck fat. So just drizzle it over the top and then I'm going to season it with salt. I'm also gonna season with some pepper. So now I'm gonna cook the duck in the oven at 220 degrees. And after 45 minutes, I'm gonna reduce the heat to 200 degrees and cook it for another 45 minutes. To make the sour cherry sauce, we're gonna be adding in frozen sour cherries right into the pot. I'm going to be adding in the honey, some raw sugar. I'm adding in some beautiful spices, freshly ground cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, cloves, and star anise. So I'm adding in some corn flour just to add some thickness because the sour cherries, once they're warmed up and they're cooking, they're gonna produce a lot of liquid. I'm gonna add that with a little bit of salt and also a touch of black pepper. Once I start stirring everything through together, I want the sour cherries to become soft and I still wanna keep them whole. So I don't wanna cook this sauce for a long time. I just want them to keep their shape and become sweetened with the sugar and the honey. After 10 minutes, the sauce is looking really nice and thick. This is the consistency that you want. Here is my duck fresh out of the oven and it is looking beautiful. So I've just finished plating up this beautiful roast duck. It's just looking and smelling incredible. So now I'm going to add the beautiful sour cherry spice sauce. It's gonna add a beautiful sweet and sour flavor to it all. I'm gonna add the last bit, which is a garnish made from raw crushed garlic with lots of vibrant fresh herbs. So I'm using dill, parsley and mint and some olive oil just to mix it through nicely. And I'm gonna put it all around on top of the vegetables like a wreath. I am feeling so festive with this dish. It immediately it screams, Christmas to me, you know, it's nourishing, it's festive, it's celebrative. I just love it. And here is my serving of my dish. Time to give this dish a taste. It's gonna get a beautiful piece of the duck. It looks juicy. Mmm. Mmm. That is the most beautiful Christmas dish. I'm really happy with the result. 
This sour cherry sauce, oh my gosh, it just packs a punch. Oh wow. It's the most wonderful time of the year. This looks like Christmas on a plate. I'm seeing duck. It's got that rustic feel and what a roast should be. Definitely love roast potatoes. There's this like really rich red sauce. Like that is poppin'. Oh wow, wow, it's like so soft. I'm gonna try and add everything onto my fork if I can. So much flavour happening. Quite refreshing. <laughs> that duck is freaking tasty. Crispy, really good flavour. The fat's been rendered from the duck really well. Succulent, no effort to chew. It's so warm and hearty. And there is a really bright and rich cherry sauce. It really helps this dish sing. And the fact that it actually breaks apart and just melts in your mouth. Honestly, this has been roasted so well. And it's so juicy. The first bite was just like a flavor bomb. The chef has also chosen to use shallots and they really melt apart. The stuffing's really good. I think it's got some walnuts. So the earthy notes of the stuffing, they're very rich and I don't see myself eating too much of it. I'd go for one that's a bit more bread crummy. The roast potatoes are cooked perfectly. It finishes off with that nice fresh parsley and dill at the end of each bite. I can actually see it sitting at the table with your family and friends. It's a lovely, homely, you know, wholesome dish. Well, this is a really good combo. Everything just works well together. I would give it a nine and a half out of 10. Oh my God, candy walnuts. It's like a surprise, Christmas surprise. I'm gonna give it a nine and a half. I want that sauce recipe. <laughs> I've only faulted one thing because of that. I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. So today I'm gonna be serving my roast pork, which is the signature dish at my restaurant at Sydney Cebulichon. I'm gonna be roasting a mix of vegetables and I'm gonna be glazing it with my adobo butter glaze. So all the good stuff. So today we have a slab of um, boneless pork belly here. It's about seven to 800 grams. We're gonna season it. So I'm gonna start it off with a couple of teaspoons of vegetable stock powder. I'm gonna add in my star anise. So the star anise gives it that aromatic flavor profile. And then I've got about half a clove of garlic here. So don't be shy with your garlic. I've got about five or six pieces of dry um, bay leaves. Grab our lemongrass and we're just gonna sort of snap it like so and twist it around like so. So you got your lemongrass there. I have a few sticks of scallions here as well. Just snap it across or you can cut it, it's up to you. But there you go. I've got about three pieces of butcher string here, which we're gonna use to tie up. So is we're gonna take that and fold it, grab the string, put it under there. Tie it in the middle, tie up the other end. So that's all done. Now we're just gonna cut off the excess string. We're gonna place it in this wire rack on a tray, we're gonna pour hot water over the skin. And you'd probably wanna use about a liter to two liters of like really hot water. And this helps dry out the skin. You'll get a better crackle. And then the skin also softens. Pat it dry. Now the last bit is we have this liquid here that I've mixed together. It's half a can of Coke and three tablespoons of dark soy. And we're just gonna brush it. This actually gives it that golden color the sugar that's in the Coke also helps the, to develop that sort of caramelization. So now I'm just gonna chuck it in the oven at 190 degrees for about 45 minutes. Once that's done, then for an extra 50 minutes, put up the temperature to about 220 degrees just until you get that golden color crispiness to your liking. So this is our final finished product. Now we've let it rest for about 15 minutes. Let's do the crunchy skin test, okay? Listen. So that is the best ringtone. Flip that over, the stuffing's inside there. Let's slice her up. So as you can see, each of these slices, all the aromats that we've stuffed in earlier is right there. It's so evident in each slice. And there you have it. That's your Sydney Cibulichon roast pork belly roll. Time to plate up. Today, I've made this sort of wreath of roasted veggies, which I've glazed with my own adobo butter. Voila. It looks very, very exciting, very delicious, and very Christmassy. Let's do this, let's dig in. And we've got a dipping sauce. Wow. 
That's crazy good. Everything, it just syncs together so well. It's like an orchestra. Oh, wow. The second that this has been put down in front of me, I can smell it. Lemongrass, I think, some bay leaves. Red and green, very Christmas colors, but capsicum to me doesn't, I don't know why I can't wrap my head around it, but I just can't put capsicum on the Christmas table. Pork, roasted veggies. I'm going to dig in. Can you hear the crackle? Mmm. Mmm. That crunch, absolutely beautiful. The pork is flavoured beautifully. There's definitely Asian spices. The pork is melting your mouth, soft and tender. I need to learn the cooking technique that was used to make this. Coca-Cola in the glaze. What? Coca-Cola as an ingredient is very underrated. I need to explore this more. It tastes like licorice. It's in the filling. It's star anise, wow. It's like softened so much that it actually has turned into almost like an edible spice. Oh, the roasted vegetables are beautiful as well. I love roasted capsicum. So I'm gonna taste this sauce. Maybe like a ginger garlic vinegar. I think the dipping sauce is what makes it. And you've also got the acidity that actually helps break it down. Honestly, this dish is really good as well. I'm sorry, today, it's hard. <laughs> Eight and a half. I just think it's a perfect addition to like a Christmas barbecue lunch on a hot day. A nine and a half. Next time, let's leave the capsicum off the plate. Everything else, you're invited. An eight out of 10. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a slow roast salmon served with num gel dressing, vermicelli noodles, and herbs on the side. This is a perfect banquet meal. It's quick, it's easy, it's also so healthy and refreshing. It's actually great for a summer Christmas. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to season the salmon. We're going to drizzle a bit of extra virgin olive oil. I'm actually going to rub the olive oil in. Just make sure that we're covering majority of the surface. So I'm gonna sprinkle some sea salt. We're gonna grind black pepper on top, add the lemon slices all across the salmon fillet. And the last step is we're gonna add dill. Dill gives it this beautiful herbaceous flavor. We're going to wrap it up like a parcel. Now it's ready to go into the oven. It's gonna take approximately 40 to 45 minutes on 140 to 150 degrees Celsius. What I'm gonna make now, it's called nam jiao. Nam jiao is like the mother sauce of Laotian cuisines. There's also different variations of it in Southeast Asia, but this sauce goes well on pretty much everything. So first up in goes the garlic and the bird's eye chili. So we're gonna blitz it till it's finely chopped. We're gonna actually make the sauce now. So the first step is we're gonna add in fish sauce, add in caster sugar. Now we're gonna mix in the sugar and the fish sauce together so that the sugar slightly dissolves. The next step is we're gonna add in half a lime. Mix it together again. Now I'm gonna add in the finely chopped garlic and chili that I made earlier. Chopped coriander leaves, just a nice handful. Now the next step is actually optional. So the next thing that we're gonna add is roasted crushed peanuts. Now I like to add it because it actually elevates the sauce to another level, or if you're allergic to peanuts, you don't have to add it in at all. I'm gonna add in a pinch of salt. Mmm, that's a good combo. And here you have your nam jiao dressing. So once it's out of the oven, this is what it looks like. So here I have here is my slow roast salmon fillet. Now to serve my salmon fillet, we eat it like a lettuce cup. So what I have here is I've got lettuce, a few herbs, I've got pickled carrots, I've got vermicelli noodles, fresh cucumber, and also the beautiful nam jiao dipping sauce that we made earlier. So I'm gonna break up the salmon. Oh, it is feeling amazing. It's flaking up beautifully. I am in heaven. Because we love to, you know, eat with our hands, we want something fresh, something, you know, because we're having a Christmas summer, something light and refreshing. And this is just the perfect dish for it. Beautiful protein, bit of noodles, so a bit of your carbs, and just the fresh herbs, the amazing sauce that we pour on everything. This dish represents pretty much me. I guess it just shows it doesn't have to be your standard roast, it can be a slow roast salmon fillet that would, you know, entertain the whole family. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Fancy. So refreshing, very summer dish. There's so much of it, like it looks like a massive fillet. The smell of the ingredients are punchy. Serving Bondi Iceberg's realness right here on a plate. <laughs> this is a game changer for Christmas. It's like a healthy taco. Mm. Wow. Mm.
And that salmon is perfectly cooked. Yum. So tender. Holy cow. It's so juicy. I did not expect this. Breaks apart in your mouth. I'm going to pour this in here. I love to see chili. I love peanuts. That dipping sauce is really good. Ooh, it's got a kick. It's not too much chili, but it's just right. Right at the heart of this dish, dill is like the underlying note. It's strong, it's pungent. There is coriander. I'm the biggest fan of coriander. If coriander had a fan, I'm the number one fan. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> my mouth is on fire, but I like that. Flavor, crunch, texture, aroma, presentation. I would give this a score of a 10. Everything just goes together. There's just freshness. And I think that's what we need a little bit at the table because this brings balance. The most soft, tender salmon I have ever had. It melted in my mouth, 9.5 out of 10. It just screams like Australian Christmas, you know? The lettuce really absorbs and it's just like a beautiful like boat for the sauce. I have to give this dish a 10 out of 10. Beautiful dish, I can't fault it. So the dish that I'm creating is a roast beef tenderloin and I'm serving it with Brussels sprouts. It's going to have a beautiful whipped goat's curd as well as a stunning beetroot jam. It's also a very premium cut and serving it rare is the ultimate. So the first step, I'm creating a herbed butter which is going to bring all the flavor to the dish. It starts with butter, a little bit of salt, a smidge of pepper, and of course, all the beautiful herbs. So I've got some rosemary, some lemon thyme, some regular thyme, and now some shallots. They just add so much sweetness. And finally, garlic. I'm going to use my paddle attachment that goes on the KitchenAid here, and that is going to combine. Wowie, whipped and aerated. It's got a beautiful soft texture. There we go. I'm just gonna save this for later and we're gonna add that on top of our roast beef. So now on to the beautiful beef tenderloin. I'm gonna add some salt on there and just be super generous and pepper. Rub all that on and then season some more. <laughs> so I've just brought this skillet up to temperature. Just going to sear this beef three minutes each side. It's gonna get a nice caramelized crust on the outside. This is looking beautiful. I'm gonna take that out carefully. And now I'm gonna add some butter into the hot pan. And then Brussels sprouts are going in. These are just gonna cook in the juices of the meat and really soak up that flavor. I'm also gonna add some herbs in. So I've got some rosemary. Then I'm gonna add some whole garlic cloves, salt and pepper. I'm gonna cook the Brussels sprouts for about 10 minutes. And then I'm adding that beef tenderloin back into the skillet. We're adding that herb butter on that we created before. So I'm just gonna carefully place that in large chunks on top. And now when this roasts in the oven, that's all going to melt and infuse the flavor into this whole dish. So let's get that in the oven for 20 minutes at a really low heat. So now I'm making a beetroot jam to accompany my dish and what better time than Christmas to use cherries. Heat a pan on medium heat, add some finely diced beetroot pieces. I've also pitted and halved my cherries. And then I just have that other half of the shallot that I cut up before. Of course, jam is created with sugar, red wine vinegar, and then some bold flavors with some red wine. So this is gonna cook down until it becomes thick and jammy. And it's just gonna add that pop of purple and be so beautiful on the plate. So that is the beef straight out the oven. Look at it, it just looks absolutely perfect. I'm gonna take that out and that just needs to rest for a moment or two so that the juices really hold into it. Now I'm gonna slice it. This should be a beautiful rare beef inside. Oh, there we go. That's exactly what I want. And here we go, that is it. So I'm just laying it down among the Brussels sprouts here. So I have whipped some goat's cheese with a little bit of lemon. I'm just gonna put pockets of it around and then when you're eating it, you're just gonna get little pockets of different flavors. One of the great things about doing this is you can really fill any gaps and holes um, and make the plate feel really quite full. Now remember, we also created that beetroot jam. So I'm gonna add that on top. This is looking stunning. And then lastly, I'm a guy for texture. So I'm adding on that crunch. I've got some toasted sourdough and pistachios. Bam, 
There we go. That is my Christmas roast. It looks super festive. I'm really excited to share this with all the other chefs. We should have a taste. Mmm, that's so soft and tender. Make sure I get all components. Wow, what a Christmas delight. There are so many dynamic flavors going on. I know they're gonna love it. Wow, where do I start? It's very rustic. This looks and smells amazing. Oh, who doesn't love a roast beef? Oh, tender. Bon appetit. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that beef is freaking crazy. Wow. <laughs> The meat is actually perfect. So pillowy. It's just like marshmallow, but beef. That goat cheese is amazing. Beetroot, cherry, love it. I did not expect it to have such a strong, vibrant flavor. You've got multiple layers of texture, difference of the saltiness, the sweetness, the crunchiness, so different textures. I love to see Brussels sprouts on a plate of food. This is my kind of food. Very Christmassy. Those who don't like Brussels sprouts, trust me, when you have this, you're gonna love Brussels sprouts. Everything just works perfectly well. I just can't stop eating it. To me, this is a no-brainer. It is a 10 out of 10 for me. I'll take that home for sure. It's like a big hug on a plate, and I would definitely love to be eating this, you know, with their family and just sharing the moment with them. I'm definitely gonna give it a nine. I love it so much, I'm gonna give this a nine and a half out of ten. Well, wow, look at that. The plate is freaking. This. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? It's freaking gone. The winner of Chef's Try Each Other's Christmas Roast is you. <gasps> no. <laughs> no. Yay! I'm excited. Let us know in the comments below what you like to make for Christmas. Come to my restaurant, Sydney Sabulichon, at Newtown. Check us out. Buzzfeed discount, ten percent off the bill. <laughs> Just say that I know you're from BuzzFeed. Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching, guys.